In this video, I'm going to show you guys the best layout to get the huge chef cat in my restaurant. So if you guys watched the last video, you guys would have already seen that I actually already completed the 100,000 customers and already got the chef cat. As you can see in the bottom left, there's no quest for me to complete. I already finished it. But a lot of you guys were asking me for the layout that I did use to get 100,000 customers. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys just that. But yeah, this layout is literally the best layout in the game. Like the person that created this layout, this layout was literally created by many hours of testing and it's literally the best proven layout for the entire game. So yeah, all those other layouts you see, they are not as good as this one. So yeah, make sure you guys watch the entire video so you guys know how you can get a ton of customers. So yeah, let's get into it right now. But yeah, if we go into my restaurant, as you can see, it's pretty chaotic on the first floor. And I'm pretty much going to go ahead and just wipe my first floor and build it from scratch so you guys can see it as well. So a lot of you guys are probably not endgame like I am right now. So I'm assuming most of you guys do not have a bunch of the corrupted tables. If you do not have them, I suggest you guys use the pirate sets. And if you guys don't even have that much money, just use like the cheapest stuff you can get. You pretty much just want to make sure that you have tables and chairs. So the first thing you want to do is you want to put eight chairs along the entrance wall, just like so. And then you want to put four tables just like this. And then chairs on the other side. I also got this layout from someone named Redacted, so uh, thank you to him. But yeah, I also put a screenshot on the screen right now. As you can see, this is what the layout is. And if you guys don't understand it, it's all good. I'll literally build it right here for you. But yeah, from these two chairs on the right side, you want to put another table right here, just like so. And then the same thing on the other side, just like this. And then in this four block space up here, you want to just put any item that takes up four blocks. The ideal item to put here would be a Christmas tree, but I'm assuming a lot of you guys do not have that. I don't even have Christmas trees either. But yeah, if you guys do not have them, just put any four items here because there needs to be something in this space. And then the same thing for this other side, just like that. And then you want to put chairs along the back side, just like this, connecting on the same row. And you also want to make sure you leave a one block area right here in the middle empty because this is pretty important. But yeah, here is the hardest step that you guys need to do. You don't have to do this, but this makes it a lot more helpful. As you can see, I'm putting silverware trays just like so. And then what you want to do is you want to no clip the tables into the silverware trays. It's pretty difficult to do it on your first try. And it might take a second, but there you go. As you can see, I got the table inside of the silverware tray. And you pretty much want to put four silverware trays and repeat this process along these four tables. But yeah, once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. But yeah, once you do that, just put chairs on the back sides just like so. And then you want to put a 2x2 two two filler item at the ends of each of these as well, just like before. And then pretty much for the rest of the floor, you're pretty much done. If you have any coffee machines, just put them alongside here. Although I'm assuming most of you guys probably do not have them. And if you don't, you can literally just put any decor item and just make sure you fill up all the space. Alright, there we go. As you can see, I filled up every single spot in this first floor, except you have to remove one block. You want to go from this back left chair right here, and you want to go up six blocks. And on this sixth block, you want to remove this one. And that is because people will go through here and they will teleport right here instead of walking all the way to the portal right over here. As you can see, customers are just walking right here and teleporting up to booths. So yeah, this is pretty much everything you need to do for the first floor. And like I mentioned, if you guys don't have the corrupted tables, you can literally use any tables in the game. But I suggest you guys to make sure the tables are too long. Like the cheapest one is the tiki table. As you can see, it goes two blocks long. Do not use the one by one tables because they are not effective at all. And also for all these filler items, the items do not matter. There just has to be an item there. It can literally be the cheapest decor item. It does not matter. But yeah, I'm just using the haunted coffins because I have a lot of them. But yeah, this is pretty much everything you need for the first floor. And then for the second floor, it's pretty simple. I'll put a picture on screen as you can see for the layout of what it looks like. So you want to go ahead and start by putting two dishwashers in this corner and two of them on the other side just like this. And if you guys do not have the other floors unlocked and you only have the first floor, You'll probably be okay with putting your stoves and your dishwasher somewhere on the first floor, although it is definitely not effective at all later on. Once you get multiple stories, you want to put a bunch of your stuff on multiple stories. I'll show you guys in a second. But yeah, you want to go ahead and put all the rest of your dishwashers just like so. It doesn't really matter what order they are in, you want to have them just like this. I'm pretty sure this is about 14 dishwashers or so. And then you want to have one row of order stands just like this. And also again, keep in mind, this is like literally the end game stuff. I suggest you guys use the regular stuff if you guys do not have a ton of money. But yeah, and then for these stoves, what you want to do is you want to make a 3x3 three three without putting in the corners just like so. so. You want to make sure you fill up every single slot except for the very middle slot. 
And there you go, as you can see, I put every single stove in this little area. And then for the final step in the floors, you want to fill up three blocks long alongside the entire area right here. And there we go, as you can see, I finished it. And if this other empty area, you can just leave it empty and do not put anything because it will not help you. But yeah, this pretty much just makes it so the workers cannot leave this area and they are confined to these couple blocks right here they can go in. So yeah, this is pretty much everything for the second floor that you need. I'm assuming a lot of you guys do not have this stuff. Like I mentioned earlier, it does not matter what you put for these filler items. It can literally be any item that is inside of the decor section. And then for these stoves, obviously, I'm sure you, some of you guys do not have the best stove. So you can just use any stove that you do have. And then for floors 3 through 10, they are all the exact same thing. As you can see, it's pretty basic. You pretty much have three tables here, two here, and one back here. With all the chairs filled up, and you have filler items going three wide on each side, just like this. I'll put a picture on screen. As you can see, this is the layout you guys should use from floors 3 all the way up to 10. But yeah, for example, if you guys do not have the coffee machines or the Christmas trees, you can just put any decor item inside of that slot. It does not matter. So yeah, every single floor from floors 3 through 10 should look like pretty much the exact same thing, just like this. And then also one final piece of information is that in the corners of every single floor, you want to put 16 silverware trees going up every single floor. As you can see, if I go to floor 4, there's 16 over there. And even also on the first floor, I forgot to put them here. But yeah, you want to put 16 silverware trays in the corner of the first floor if you can afford them. But if not, just keep on grinding and I'm sure you'll eventually get enough money. But yeah, that pretty much is the entire layout. And that is how I was able to get the Chef Cat extremely quick. But yeah, before I do end off the video, I did want to mention that I did actually trade the huge Chef Cat already. And the reason I did is because I knew the value was going to drop so fast. So if we open up my trade history, I gave my huge Chef Cat for a regular huge cat, which isn't that bad. And there's literally 322 that exists right now. Oh my goodness. And at the time I had it, only 5 exist. As you can see, the name still has 5 exist. And then what I did next is I went ahead and sold the huge cat for 849 billion gems. I wasn't sure how much the huge cat was worth, but I was selling it for a lot higher in the wrap. I guess it would have been a lot smarter to hold on to it because it is worth a lot more wrap now. Like 849 billion was like at the very top end of how much the wrap was worth and now it's literally worth way more. See, so yeah, I definitely should have held on to it. I could have made a lot more gems. But yeah, I did want to go ahead and mention that. If you guys do go ahead and get the Chef Cat, I highly suggest you guys trade it right away because it is going to drop so much in value. But yeah, that pretty much is everything for the video. If you guys have any questions about the layout, drop them in the comments below and I'll try and help you guys out if I can. But yeah, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel because I'm on the road to 100k subs and I'd appreciate if you subscribe. But yeah, thank you both for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.